introduced by a pro, isn't it? Well, good morning. I'm from the South. I'm used to better. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I was afraid Don may have put you to sleep with that whole intro thing. No one is ever going to pay you what your products and your services are worth. No one is ever going to pay you what your products and services are worth. They'll pay you more than that or they'll pay you less than that. And it's based on what they think it's worth and we control their thinking. There are two ways to sell, value added selling and commodity selling. Commodity selling is built on the premise that all things are equal, therefore I'll just take whatever I can get for my product or service. Value added selling is built on the premise that I can differentiate my product or my service. Now listen closely. I can differentiate my product or service in the customer's mind, not necessarily in reality, but certainly in the customer's mind to the point where the customer will give me whatever I am asking for my product or service. The only kind of selling that I teach is value added selling. The reason is I don't believe in commodities. I've never seen one. Every product, every service can be differentiated to the point where the customer will give us whatever we are asking for our product or service. So the topic this morning is going to be value-added selling. We're going to talk about why price is never the real reason why the customer said no. Even though the price objection is the most common, the most frequent objection that any of us salespeople ever hear, it is rarely, if ever, a valid objection. How long do you have to stay in sales before you hear the price objection? About 10 minutes, the very first call. The first thing the customer is going to say is the price is too high. You know why they do that? It's out of habit. And the reason they continue doing it is because out of habit, salespeople continue to drop the price. Isn't that interesting? What if we could come up with a different response other than just cutting the price? So this morning, we're going to talk about sales. How many of you are in sales? Could I see your hands? There are two kinds of people in the world, those that know they're in sales and those that don't. So let's try that again. How many of you are in sales? How many of you are in customer service? Can an entry-level employee in your organization chase off your best account? What's the answer? He called me into his office. He said, I see more in you than you see in yourself. I'm going to get you out of here. I thought, hot dog, I'm going to engineering. From operations, you go to engineering. In engineering, I'll work a 35-hour week, not a 40-hour week. I'll be drawing the circuits I've been wiring for the last 10 years. I can do that in my sleep. I'll wear a necktie to work. Short sleeve shirt, pocket protector, but necktie, the ladies will go crazy, right? <laughs> then he dropped the bomb. Engineering's full, I'm going to send you to sales. I said, actually, you can give me my tool belt back. I'm going to go upstairs and solder some more wires. I'm not going to sales. Can I speak in public? Can I strike up a conversation with strangers? Do not own a suit, and they require that you wear a suit. Do not have a degree. There are people in sales with masters. Then he did a sales technique, not knowing it was a sales technique. See, everybody's in sales. Everybody. He leaned forward, locked eyes, and he said, I want you to try this for me. Write these four words down. I dare you to use these twice between now and the end of the year. Here are the four words. Would you for me? Would you for me? When you have that garden center manager or owner and they're just kind of on the fence and you can't get them to commit try that would you try this for me and watch how things change in large corporations Great, and thank you for the invitation. This is great. Have you ever thought about how many different roles you play? If we sat down and made a list, how many times do we shift roles during the course of a day? Today we're going to talk about your role in sales in your organization, and the graphics that I'll be using will be on the screen behind me, so you may want to go into presenter view in order to have the best look at what's going on with the graphics. I'm going to keep the gallery view here so that I can see you. If you have a question, raise your hand, yell at me, or contact Don or something. We're going to break every hour for a brief bio break and time to refill the water bottles. But I want this to be your time. This is your seminar, not mine. This is your presentation, not mine. So as we go through the content, if at any point I fail to make something clear to you, 
stop me, raise your hand, do something, and let's clarify it. As you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Unless I can't answer it, in which case we'll say that's a stupid question, we'll go on to something else. If I can't answer it, I will get back to you with an answer.